on the trajectory of all of our careers, there have been mistakes, there have been setbacks. Kathy, can I ask you to talk about your time at the school board and, sure. and what you learned from that? Uh, I think that most people here know that I was Chancellor of New York City Schools, and thanks to some reporter, it is exactly, it was 96 days. I didn't count. <laughs> You know, after nearly 20 years at Hearst, I, I really did feel as though I would do something in public service at a time. I guess I thought more on a, on a uh, Washington, D.C. level, um, and I've been friendly with Mayor Bloomberg for years and years, and one day, literally at work, um, he called me on a Monday morning and said, could we get together today? And I said, I said uh, actually, I can't. Uh, it's a quarterly meetings for Hearst, and it's just, you have to be here. And so he said, well, I said, how about you know, coffee in the morning? And he said, fine. And so I met him at the next morning at 7 o'clock at his foundation offices at 78th Street. And so we, you know, a little small talk here and there for a few minutes. And he's, a, not, he's not a big anything other than a small talker. And so he said, well, why do you think you're here? And I said, well, I, <clears throat> I'm not sure. Uh, you know, perhaps you're thinking of the foundation or Bloomberg Media or whatever. No, 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 no. I want you to be New York City Schools Chancellor. If the chair was high as this, I would have broken my neck <laughs> falling off it. It was like, what? You've got to be kidding me. And he said, no, I don't want an educator. I want a business executive. You've run very large operations. You've built budgets. You've cut staff. You've done all of the kinds of things that I want. And you're an innovator. And I honestly, I was floored. And so that was it. And ironically, as I was leaving, the head of the UFT, the United Federation of Teachers, was walking in the door. And so I called my husband. I said, you're not going to believe this. And so he was so excited. And then you know, the mayor started sending in all these people to sort of persuade, persuade me that this was a great idea. And you know, I said to him, just, I, I said, look, you know, I was raised in Chicago. I went to Catholic schools. My children are in private schools. I live on Park Avenue, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I said, I, there are no boxes that can be checked here. <laughs> and uh -huh. he didn't care. And so after a couple of weeks, he'd call me and he'd say, well, you know, and I'd, I'd say, uh, I, I'm warm. You know, I'm, I'm warm. I didn't want to say I'm hot. And then one day, one of his deputy mayors said to me, um, you know, I, I, my daughter's a teacher and my wife was a teacher. I want that job if you don't want it. Well, of course, all I needed here was like a little like that, right? And so I thought, I can make a difference for the children of New York City, which is really, really what was the compelling, the compelling offer for me was to make a difference and to give back. Um, and you know, we educate a million children in this city. And so it was announced without any of the support that it should have had, um, and nobody knew about it. No one knew about it. So it was a disaster if you followed any of the press. I mean, there were trucks. I don't mean just reporters. I mean trucks in front of my apartment like five minutes later. And I was hounded on the street. I mean, I felt like Lindsay Lohan being followed by <laughs> paparazzi. Uh, a jail term would have been, it was similar to a jail term. Um, and you know, honestly, it was, it was such hard work. And I never saw any sunshine around the corner. And finally, after, you know, I don't know, the better part of three months, I said to my husband, I said, you know, I don't think this is going to get better. I said, I, I've never not been in a situation when I couldn't see that things were going to get better. And I thought to myself, there's 18 months between now and the end of the mayor's term. And what a lot of people forget, it doesn't matter where you live, but the resentment of his third term is very real outside of certain neighborhoods in New York City. Um, and so, and a lot of other you know, things going on simultaneously. The snowstorm that you remember, they couldn't find him over Christmas, and on and on and on. And, and uh, the thing that I've learned, and I've half, and half, I mean seriously, but half jokingly, I've said to people, you know, if you're ever offered an opportunity to go into public service, make sure you really understand what the outcome of that job can be, and also never go into somebody's third term. Ideally, you go in the first term. Because the first term, it's all new. You're the new team. You're going to change the world. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. You've been in Washington. You know. By the third term, you don't have any political capital left. You know, you've, you've called in all the favors. It's all been done. There's no money. There's no this. There's no that. So anyway, I said to my husband, I don't know what to do. I've never quit anything in my life. Um, and I really have never been fired. Um, and so I was tossing and turning for about two weeks. 
and the phone rings one morning early in the office, and, and the Department of Education is literally at, at a butt city hall, I mean, two minutes away, and it's with the mayor. So I called my husband back, and I said, well, actually, I'm on my way over to get fired right now. <laughs> and uh, we'd been, we'd, honestly, we'd been invited to a big party in Italy a few weeks later, and uh, my CFO, or the CFO had sort of said to me, mm, it's, not, uh, it's graduation time, you'll have a million speeches, and we can't exactly say that you're in Italy. You know, it's just not, not good. And so it, it, the mayor was very, very kind and very nice. He just said, look, I thought this would be great. It's, it's just not working out. I said, believe me, I understand. Thank you. He said, what can I do for you? I said, honestly, nothing. I didn't want him calling somebody, calling Frank Fennec, the CEO of hers, bring Kathy back. You know, I said, look, I'll just build a new life. And, and I called my husband. I said, well, we're going to Italy. <laughs> <laughs> like, tomorrow. Uh, so we did go to Italy, and we actually went to France, and we were away for about a month, and I came back, and I spent the next six months or so thinking, how do I reinvent Kathy? But, so that was a, a failure. I mean, it just never occurred to me that I couldn't succeed in that position. Um, and so, but I still would suggest to anybody, if you have the opportunity, but you've just have to, you have to be bold, and you have to have the guts to do it, and it may not work out. 